So in today's video we are going to explore a common thought among us who believe in internal security. And the question is, what happens when we stop believing? Let's say hypothetically, one day in future you stop believing. You denounce God and say it doesn't exist. And so at that point, does the former believer become an unbeliever? Do they lose their salvation because they no longer believe in God? Well, the only two answers to this. The first one is obvious. Eternal security means you cannot lose your salvation. So this guy is still a believer, even though he goes on to, you know, denounce God and goes on out there calling himself an atheist and even goes further to deride Christians, right? The guy is still saved. Once saved, always saved. So he is still saved. Then there's the other possibility that this guy was never saved in the first place. He's been lost all his life. And he may have gone to church and had Christian friends and hung out in the church and all that, but you know, he really never got saved. So those are the two possibilities. Yeah. And so let's delve deeper into the first answer where the guy is actually saved despite him, you know, denouncing Christians and calling himself an atheist. So let's look at that scenario. Despite it being the more unlikely scenario, this believer who is currently um, denouncing Christ and you know saying negative things about Christians, he or she remains saved because salvation is irreversible. I like how the late Bob George put it, saying that you know a butterfly cannot turn back into a worm, it does not turn back into a caterpillar. Once it's a butterfly, it's a butterfly. Now the butterfly may act like a worm, and in this case, acting like a worm is going out there denouncing Christians and all that stuff. The fact that it's acting like a worm doesn't change that it's still a butterfly. Once you're a butterfly, you will always remain a butterfly. I think if we really understood what salvation means, this question wouldn't even turn into a theological debate. We need to go past the belief that salvation is simply the forgiveness of all our sins, the past, present, and future. We must see that it's an irreversible trend spiritually. Yeah? Listen, at the point of salvation, when you put your trust in the finished work on the cross, you are spiritually transferred from Adam and put into Christ. That is something God did. And so you cannot go back into Adam no matter how hard you tried. God put you into Christ, sealed you with the Holy Spirit, and yeah, you cannot escape from that. You received eternal life. Eternal life is a life without beginning and without an end. That means, you know, when your time on earth runs out, you continue to live on. In fact, the Bible says that you remain saved as long as Christ is alive. Yeah, That's the length of your salvation. That's the length of your new life. You're united with Christ. Once again, you must understand that this transition cannot be reversed. You receiving a new heart, a new spirit, you being removed out of Adam and being put into Christ, all this cannot be reversed. You are a new creation. The old has passed away. And that is what salvation is. It's not only a forgiveness of sins, you really do spiritually become a divine creature, something new. And I believe it's because we fail to understand this that, you know, such a question becomes a debate in theological circles. Then the question asked next, rightfully so, is, you know, why is a believer who is sealed with the Holy Spirit going on to denounce Christians, denounce Christianity, and say all these negative things about Christians and Christianity? And the truth is, you never know where someone is in their personal work with Christ. They may be going through a rough patch. This can actually last more than a decade. Yeah? It can last a long time. Maybe they're just fed up with the hypocrisy of religion. Or even worse, they may have been seriously and deeply hurt by the institutional church. Or they may be disillusioned or distracted you know, by all the noises in this day and age. right? But like we said earlier, just because a butterfly acts like a worm, that does not mean it's no longer a butterfly. It's still a butterfly. Right? And more often than not, um, you see such believers come to their senses later down the line 10 years 20 years even 30 years later they just get tired of denying the truth that they know the incorruptible love deposited in them despite decades of living in denial in the heart of hearts 
they do know they belong to the Father. Right, so let's look at the second possibility. With this one straight up, um, we'll say, you know, if one stops believing, in most cases, they really never believed in the first place. They were never saved. Yeah, They never received salvation. They may hang out in church, you know, read the Bible, do all the churchy things, have Christian friends and all that, but they never put their trust into the finished work on the cross. And so, of course, such a person is not saved. Such a person is still in Adam. He has not been transferred into Christ. Such a person still has a wicked heart. He does not have a new heart. He does not have a new spirit. He is still an old self. He does not have divine nature. He does not have Christ's life in him or her. They remain, as Bob George would say, worms. Yeah? They are still caterpillars. They are not butterflies. They are still sinners. John speaks of such people in 1 John 2.19. So he's speaking about people who hang around the congregation, but really they never believed in Christ's deity or ever acknowledged his work in Calvary. And this is what he says about them. They went out from us, but they were not really of us. For if they had been of us, they would have remained with us. But they went out, so that it would be shown that they all are not of us. And yes, this is a more common argument for the question, if someone stopped believing, are they still saved? This is the most common answer you'll get out there. They were never saved then in the first place. That's the most common answer you'll get. And that may be true, but also the first one may be true, that they are saved and just in denial. But on to the real question. Specifically to the fruit inspectors who've taken it upon themselves to look at other people's lives and say, you know, that one's saved, that one's not saved, that one's real salvation, that's not real salvation. Do everyone a favor, and even yourself. You see, it's important for us to realize that the Christian work is deeply personal. If you don't understand that, you're going to be frustrated throughout your Christian work. Your relationship with God is very personal. Focus on the Father's love for you, right? Realize that people are at different stages in their work. And they may face circumstances that you'll never face. So spare them the judgment. Remember Paul requested the Romans not to predict who's going to go to heaven or who won't go to heaven. Instead he had them focus on the simplicity of salvation. That God made salvation so easy, so readily available, that it's literally a response away. Alright, so that's it for today's video. As usual, check out the free book uh, by Andrew Farley. I think it's the Naked Gospel. Highly recommend it if you're looking for a grace book, a book that will, you know, get you out of legalism and have you enjoy your relationship with Christ. I believe this book is for you. All right, so that's it from me. That's it from Mini. As usual, I want to thank you for always watching my videos, for liking them and sharing them. I don't take it for granted. And for those who go a step further and support this ministry on Patreon, a uh, special thank you, man. I, I, I can't say thank you enough, so thank you very much. Thank you very much. Alright, so I'll see you soon. And remain in this, my friend. Remain in this.